So I'm here in Kathmandu. When I landed, I saw an aircraft at the airport that intrigued me. Now it turned out to be a Chinese built Xi'an MA60 aircraft. Now there's not many of them flying, most of them have been grounded due to safety concerns. But Nepal Airlines have a couple of them here in Kathmandu and they send them on domestic flights all around the country. So I decided to try and go and get myself booked on one, which was a task easier said than done. You see, the only way to book domestic flights on Nepal Airlines is to visit their sales office in downtown Kathmandu. Once I'd convinced them to sell me a straight return flight to anywhere in Nepal as long as it was on an MA60, I found out that they don't take cards, only cash. After scraping ATMs and finally getting together 40,000 rupees, I went back and found out that they actually prefer payment in US dollars and getting them to take rupees ended up being a laborious task involving photocopies of passports and many, many forms to fill in. This is the airport time yes. and this is flight time. 40,000 Nepalese rupees or about $300 later, I have two tickets to fly to a city in the west of Nepal on an MA60 and then come straight back on the next flight. So. Without any further ado, let's head to Tribhuvan Airport and take a flight with Nepal Airlines on a Xi'an MA60. Let's go. Big thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I arrived at the chaotic domestic terminal at Kathmandu at 8.30am for my 9.30 flight. You have to go through security before entering the terminal, which seems to be more for show than anything as nothing was actually happening and nobody watched the screen. So the place I'm going to today is called Nepal Ganj. It's a city over in the west of the country, uh, close to the border with India, I think. I had a quick look on Google Maps last night and figured out where it was. So I'm here at the domestic terminal, just waiting for check-in to open. And then, of course, I've got to find out whether or not I can get my boarding pass for the return flight at the same time, because I've got like 20 minutes on the ground in Nepal Ganj before getting the same flight back. So we'll find out, I guess, when we do the check-in. Hello, sir. So I go and I come straight back, okay. so do I need to check in again at no, no, Nepal no, yeah. Gunge? No, need to check in again. Okay, yeah. same aeroplane though. Yeah. Enough time? Yeah, it's enough time. Enough time, right, okay. Would you like to fly it on the emergency exit, sir? Uh, I can do, yes. Yes. So, our boarding will go from gate number two, sir. Gate number two. Thank you very much, sir. Have a, Have a good day. Thank you. I headed through to the security checkpoint, which again was relatively arbitrary. You walk through with your coat on and full pockets setting off all the alarms and are given a quick pat down and wave through. Hello, good morning. Thank you. I was through to my home for what turned out to be a very long day. Okay, so they just announced that our flight to Nepal Ganges is delayed until 11. It was originally due to leave at 9.30, so it's about an hour and a half late so far. But I think they've had some bad weather over there, so a lot of flights are delayed and cancelled. So just hopefully we get on board soon. It doesn't really matter the delay, because if this one's delayed, then the next one will be as well. So it should be fine. So, update now, it's 1.30 in the afternoon, we're now four hours late um, and they've just announced that it's now delayed until three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> just, just daft. Um, I've been to the Nepal Airlines office and they say that the reason is that they've had to send the plane over to another airport um, and we have to wait for it to come back here and then hopefully the weather will have improved enough to be able to fly into Nepal Gunj. So, I'm at the point where I'm about to give up, but I'm just going to hang around until 3, I think, and see if it actually goes. Finally, at 4pm, we were called for boarding an incredible six and a half hours after our scheduled departure time. We drove to the domestic apron where our aircraft was waiting. Today's ride is incredibly just three years old, delivered brand new to Nepal Airlines in 2017. Hello. 
Namaste, how are you? Namaste, hello. Once I got on board, I arrived at my allocated seat to find that somebody had already beaten me to it. Oh, sorry, I think... 5A. Yes. Oh, A is window. A is window. So A, B. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. You are sitting near the emergency exit yes. window. So this emergency exit window is only used in the emergency yes. 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 So finally on board the Xi'an MA60. We are six hours late, but it doesn't matter. We are on board one of the rarest aircraft in the world. Looking forward to it. It was soon time for the engines to start up. The engines are Pratt & Whitney PW127s, the same type used on the ATR42 and ATR72. We taxied out to Kathmandu's runway 20 for our departure to Nepal Gunj. Today then took us west out of Kathmandu towards the city of Nepal Gunj. Flight time today was 59 minutes at a cruising altitude of 12,000 feet. The MA60 cabin is relatively comfortable, especially in the exit row. I did really like how retro the safety card is for an aircraft that's just three years old. MA-60 stands for Modern Arc 60 and it's a Chinese-built derivative of the Soviet Antonov An-24. It's not certified for use in Europe or the US. The aircraft caused some controversy in New Zealand after a Tongan airline were given one by the Chinese government. The New Zealand government suspended tourism aid to the country and warned tourists not to fly on the aircraft based on the aircraft safety record. The MA60 has been involved in 15 accidents since 2012, one of which was fatal. However, it is kind of worth noting that most of those accidents were down to pilot error rather than specific design faults with the aircraft, and the one fatal accident was down to pilot error as they tried to complete a visual landing in heavy fog. So on the ground at Nepal Gunj, um, everybody else has got off, they said I can stay on the plane just while they turn it around and then back to Kathmandu. Hey. I was told that I could stay on board the aircraft during the turnaround as Kathmandu had rang ahead to get my boarding pass issued and get me boarded for the return leg already. As the aircraft was clean the crew offered me more drinks and the first officer invited me up to the flight deck to take a look. So, like very nice, yes. I phone on the Antonov 24 quite a lot, so. Oh, okay. Are you like a. Very similar. All right. <laughs> oh, it's very good. Oh, uh, this is Thank it. you. So that was pretty cool. Got to go and um, see the first officer on the flight deck, have a look at the cockpit. It was really cool. Um, I was waiting for everybody to board here at um, Nepal Gunge. The weather is. It's quite rainy, but I'm glad to be sat on board. They've just finished cleaning the aircraft, and I think I've just heard them say that the passengers are ready to board. So I will see you very soon if I get booted out of my seat or if I have a seat mate for the next bit. So, yeah. As I wait for the passengers to board, I just want to say a big thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Surfshark's a VPN provider. A VPN is a tool that encrypts your connection to the internet, meaning that you're always safe when connecting to public Wi Fi. When you connect to public Wi-Fi, you could be sharing your data with anyone. When it's turned on, Surfshark encrypts all the data sent via the internet so that no one can see your passwords, private messages, steal your photos, videos or any other sensitive data. 
As I travel around the world, certain websites are blocked in some countries. Even your favourite YouTuber is blocked in China. Surfshark allows you to access all the same sites that you use at home. Surfshark also allows you to unblock content. Whenever I'm travelling, I like to stay connected to home and carry on watching my favourite TV shows. But sites like BBC iPlayer are blocked outside the UK. Surfshark allows me to connect to a UK server and then appear as if I'm in the UK, meaning I can still watch British TV. Surfshark's available for all of your devices, there's an app for Mac, Windows, iOS, Android and many more. And if you use the link down below with the promo code of Noel Phillips, you get an 83% discount off a membership with Surfshark and an extra month for free. Fairly soon the passengers were boarding and it wasn't long before the engine started for our flight back to Kathmandu. to Kathmandu took us east towards the capital. We made a right turn at Bharatpur to join the crazy long approach path into Kathmandu airport. Flight time tonight was 1 hour and 2 minutes at a cruising altitude of 11,000 feet. There were even more snacks and drinks on the return leg and the flight was much emptier than the outbound leg. So on the way back to Kathmandu now, it's quite interesting how low we're actually flying. On the way over we were at 12,000 feet and on the way back we're just 11,000 feet. It doesn't seem very high at all in a country that's dominated by massive mountains I have to say. But making good progress, we've got about 20 minutes left to run now until we land back in Kathmandu. Quite impressed with the MA60 to be fair. It's like a modern version of the Antonov 24 which is exactly what it is I guess. Noise wise it's a lot quieter than the Antonov 24 even though it's still pretty noisy but it's not as bad as the Antonov 24. And generally pretty smooth aircraft to ride on as well. The cabin crew have been absolutely amazing on this flight as well. They've been throwing snacks and drinks at me. They've even brought me a hot cup of tea. Nobody else seems to have got that, only me. So. Um, and the flight crew have been really nice as well, very friendly and welcoming. So it's just a real pleasure to be on board. The crew were just incredible. And the seatbelt signs on, it looks like we're starting our descent. the other okay. flight attendant as well. Thank, Thank you so you. much, it's lovely flying with you. Yes, hopefully. My return flight to Nepal Gunge cost me 336 US dollars or 257 pounds for a total distance flown of 455 miles or a cost per mile of a whopping 56 pence. Foreigners get charged a much higher fare on domestic flights in Nepal. To put it into context, my Nepali seatmate on the way out paid only 20 dollars each way for the same flight. So back once again in Kathmandu, after a day that was much longer than originally planned, but I think it was well worth the wait to fly on that really cool MA60 over to Nepal Gunge and back. Really enjoyed that ride. It was a really rare aircraft to fly on, really cool plane, nice ride over there, and the cabin crew were just brilliant, really lovely. Let me know what you think to the MA60 down in the comments, and also, what's the rarest aircraft type that you've ever flown on? I'd love to hear your stories down in the comments below, but in the meantime, as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care, namaste, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.